back to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Zoe I'm a former AZA zoo educator reptile mom and naturalist and today's video is one that was requested months ago <laughs> so I apologize it's taken this long to put it out but this video is corn snakes versus milk snakes which one is the best beginner snake I did this video probably back in like March between corn snakes and ball pythons because that's usually where I see the kind of question which one's the better beginner snake um, and someone actually asked me to do another video like that but with corn snakes and milk snakes so that's what we're gonna do today so I have out right now Phoenix my albino corn snake my ML corn snake and halfway through this video I will take out zero my milk snake so for these videos I do kind of talk about these different categories I compare how they handle I compare their enclosure their care what they eat how big they get how long they live I do lots of comparisons and then I kind of talk about things that they're both very similar with. So really the overall takeaway, I'm just going to give you guys spoiler alerts, the overall takeaway of this video is milk snakes and corn snakes are pretty much one in the same. You really can't go wrong with either one, you're practically going to get the same snake. Alright, video's done. See you guys later. But no really, they are extremely similar but we're still going to talk about them. So starting with feeding, they're both going to eat mice. They're never going to be big enough to need rats. Mice are totally fine, which is good because mice are more cost efficient than rats. Rats I really just save for the bigger snakes, um, my ball pythons, um, my boa constrictor and my doomerals boa, and my Colombian rainbow boa. But my thinner, smaller snakes, my corn snake, my milk snake, they only get mice. So both her and Zero are on adult mice now. Um, that's probably all they'll ever need is just adult mice. Pretty inexpensive, pretty easy. Next with handling, um, this is kind of why I take out the animals so you can see how they handle. Um, so Phoenix is actually being very good right now. Uh, corn snakes in general are very easy to handle. They're actually fun to handle because they never stop moving really. Or they just, I mean she's not moving too much but like she is still moving. She's not just sitting there like a ball python would just kind of sit there. Um, so they're pretty fun to handle. You do kind of need two hands typically to handle. Um, she's usually kind of crazy. She's being very good right now. Probably because she's a little chilly. She was in her cool hide. I just woke her up. Um, so she's not being too bad. But this is also the snake that whipped me in the face during educational program. <laughs> so don't let her fool you because about 40 people saw her tail whip me right in the face. And uh... I ended up putting her away because she was not having it that day and I took questions and a little boy asked me, did it hurt when she hit you? I was like, oh, you, you saw that. And he was like, yeah, yeah, we all saw that. Great, great. But she's being pretty good right now. They're pretty easy to handle. Um, it was kind of a handful because she was my first snake and I had never actually handled a snake before getting her. Um, so. <laughs> It was quite an interesting learning process, but here we are today, totally fine, totally great, pretty easy to handle. Um, milk snakes are going to be roughly the same. In general, corn snakes are pretty chill. Um, the one we I worked with at the zoo was very calm, very easy to handle, just absolutely great. Milk snakes in general I find are just very crazy. Um, yeah, so you'll see Zero when I take him out. So we'll kind of talk about his handling when I take him out. So corn snakes, there's quite a large gap when it comes to their size. You're looking at anywhere from like two to six feet, depending on the sex, depending on just the snake in general, whether it was power fed or not. Um, Phoenix here was severely power fed. She was a rehoming situation. Um, so she was very, very power fed. Um, so she was very fat when I got her and she's just, she's very, very big. She's definitely on the huge side for a corn snake where the corn snake at the zoo she's like what are you now four she's like four years old now the corn snake at the zoo is like 10 years old and a third of her size so it really just you you don't know it just depends but but you're looking at anywhere between two to five feet for a milk or for a sorry corn snake and because they are a very thin-bodied snake, 
Um, that's kind of similar or the same thing for milk snakes. They are a very thin bodied noodle-ish snake. You're only looking at about two to three pounds. Nothing crazy, nothing heavy. Um, you're basically just holding a huge wet noodle. Uh, milk snakes are going to be exactly the same as far as size goes. Anywhere from two to five feet. Uh, Zero's kind of right in between. He's probably around like three to four feet, probably more like three. Um, so he's kind of like in the middle range. Phoenix is on the larger size. But again, you're only looking at like two to three pounds. Nothing crazy. They're a very manageable snake, very good size. That's why they're great for beginners. So going back to enclosures, um, they're gonna need roughly exactly the same enclosure. You're looking at anywhere between three to four foot long, or in other words, 40 to 50 gallons. So for example, her and Zero right now are both in 40 gallon breeder Exoterras. Um, she's actually got a new enclosure coming in because she is so big, I've started to feel like that Exoterra is too small for her because it's perfect for Zero and he's smaller than she is. So she's actually got a new enclosure coming in anytime now, really. Um, so spoiler alert, uh, it's gonna be a four by two by 18. So I didn't think she quite needed a four by two by two you know she's not that ginormous but i figured 4 by 2 by 18 18 inches is how tall the exoterras are which i think is absolutely perfect for them um but she's going to gain an extra foot and gain some more depth so it'll just be overall much better for her she does climb around she does adventure a lot so it'll just be really good for her so yeah you're looking at anywhere between a three to four foot long enclosure which could be 40 to 50 gallons if you're going by the gallon um they're going to need pretty much the same temperatures, very easy to achieve, um, roughly the same humidity, which isn't very high. So that's why another reason they're good for beginners because they really don't need that high of humidity. So it's nothing hard to achieve. So kind of going off of handling, we've got temperament. So they're both kind of skittish species. Um, the individual could be very calm with lots of handling. They could be more calm, um, but in general, they're kind of a skittish shy species. So they're not going to stop moving. So I'm going to put her back and take out Zero and we'll talk about their temperament, cost, and lifespan. Okay, so he must have known I was coming to get him because he was completely buried in the dirt. So I took some work to find him and now I'm all dirty. Couldn't just make my life easy. So right off the bat you can see he's smaller than Phoenix is. He's moving around a lot. Um, but he's, he's a good boy. Just watch him while I talk because that's how you'll kind of see how they handle, um, but temper temperament wise, you're getting me all dirty. Uh, temperament wise, milk snakes tend to be a little more skittish, where corn snakes tend to be a little more docile. So as far as handling goes, I think corn snakes are the better beginner. Um, really between these two, there's not much of a difference. Sometimes my hands have to work a little faster with him and I really need two hands with him. Um, but part of that could just be the fact that he's smaller than Phoenix. Phoenix is a little easier to handle because there's more of her where he's smaller there's less of him um but are you gonna shed again you look like you're gonna shed again you never stop shedding but really and truly handling them is very similar melt sticks just tend to be a little more on the skittish side but nothing crazy um neither of them are very aggressive species the odds of you getting bit by them are very slim like i usually say though animals each have their own personalities one could be a little more aggressive than the other um so it just depends on the animal and how much attention you give it and whether or not its care is accurate because sometimes care being off can make them a little cranky. Um, but you're unlikely to get bit by either of them um, in a defensive way. They're pretty, pretty harmless. I mean, a bite from them isn't going to hurt or do anything. So there's really no... Um, no danger. I don't want to say no danger, but like no harmful danger to either of these species um there's no risk really of you getting hurt um so yeah you can see i'm definitely having to put a little more work into handling him than i did with phoenix so lifespan they're both going to live about 15 to 20 years snakes in general are a long-term commitment they're going to live quite a long time um depending on where you look sometimes corn snakes you'll see 10 to 15 years but I think those numbers are old because, you know, as we this hobby has been around longer, we learn more, we improve our care more, and animals are starting to live longer. So I would say expect to have a corn snake for 15 to 20 years as opposed to 10 to 15, which is what a lot of sites will say. Um, and you always want to aim for higher. And 
At least I think with the improved care that we all have now, 15 to 20 is more likely than 10 to 15. But either way, um, pretty long-lived animal. So when it comes to cost, on average, a corn snake is probably going to be your cheaper option. Um, milk snakes by no means are expensive. Really, they're still very affordable. They're about the same as a corn snake. But corn snakes you can find less. Um, corn snakes you can find starting at about $75, and they'll go up to about $375. I think $375 was kind of the most expensive one I saw. Um, I quickly like what went on Morph Market and looked to see what the cheapest, what was the most expensive. So you're looking at anywhere between like $75 to $375, depending on the morph. Um, some morphs are going to be more expensive than others. Um, so you've got some color combinations to choose from. Like I said, Phoenix was an Amel. She was an albino. I love the albinos. I think they're super pretty. Um, so I got her as a rehoming situation for 60 bucks with her tank. So if you can find them being rehomed or adopted, you might get a little bit more of a deal. But they're really, they're not an expensive snake. So it's another reason they're great for beginners. Milk snakes are the same. These guys are usually going to start at about $100, $100, $150. Um, but again, very pretty. There's different color options. Um, but starting out, you can easily find a corn snake for like $75, where these guys are going to start out at about 100 So not a huge difference. Shouldn't really make that much of a difference. Um, so just find one you like. Both are great for beginners. Um, he is technically a Mexican milk snake. People like to argue with me on this. He was bought from a breeder as a Mexican milk snake. People tell me he's not, so I asked them what he is and no one can agree. So, you know what? I'm not breeding him. He's just a pet. He's just an education animal. So I'm just going to keep calling him a milk, Mexican milk snake. That's what he was bought from a breeder as. So that's all the information I've got on him. Um, but I got him for eighty dollars I want to say they wanted ninety but I didn't want to go to the bank or like break a 20 so he accepted 80 um, so pretty good pretty good price for him not nothing crazy it was about average what you would pay for them so whoop. so cost you can expect around a hundred dollars at least so I'm just going to end the video talking about things that both of them have in common. As we've learned from this video, that's pretty much everything. But some things specifically, like they're not venomous. They are non-venomous species. Like I said, a bite from them isn't really going to do much and not even might not even break the skin, honestly. Um, so they are non-venomous, so very safe for beginners. Going off of that, they have very small teeth. So again, safe for beginners. Neither of them get ginormous. So you're not looking at like a boa constrictor, like a BCI, like my BCI Samoa or my Doom Rolls Cronk. You're not looking at anything crazy like that. Like I said, wet noodles. They don't get huge. Really good size for beginners. They have a long, slim body, very noodle-esque. 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 They're very noodle-esque. And lastly, they have very easy maintenance. So again, this is just a compare and contrast. This isn't supposed to be a care video. Um, so... I'm not going to go deep into the easy maintenance. You guys probably already got that from the points I've already talked about. But yeah, so I know this video probably wasn't very helpful because it's supposed to help you decide which one is the better beginner snake for, for you. They're basically the same. So maybe you will find this helpful. Maybe you're just overthinking it. You're like, oh my gosh, milk snake, corn snake. Like, I don't know which one's right for me. They're basically one and the same, to be completely honest. You really can't go wrong with either one. Um, I love them both. Really, for me, handling them is pretty much exactly the same experience. Their care is pretty much exactly the same. Um, so, if you are stuck between a corn snake and a milk snake, I would really say, you know, maybe look at the different morphs. Look at the different localities. If you're talking about like milk snakes, I'm not sure if there's different. I don't think there's different localities for corn snakes. I've never really thought about it. I don't think there really is. But like milk snakes, you've got the different localities. You've got Mexican milk snakes. You've got. Why am I blinking right now? There's a ton of milk snakes. I'm, I'm having a massive brain fart. I apologize. Honduran. That's another one. Uh, Cinnalone. 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 
anyway you guys get what I'm saying um so maybe just think about like what it is you're looking for do you want a rehoming situation in case see if you can find a corn snake or milk snake rehomed whatever you find is what you get um other colors you want like I knew my first snake was gonna be a corn snake I fell in love with them at the zoo when I was really little and I always wanted one and I fell in love with the albino ones so I got very lucky when I found phoenix and then zero here was my dream snake for a while I wanted this tricolored look the uh, black red and white so the milk snake I got had to have this colors and so I looked at expos I talked to breeders no one had one I looked for like a year no one had one finally he showed up on Craigslist four hours away and I was like he's mine <laughs> I will drive eight hours in a day I don't care he's mine so that's how I got zero so maybe if you're stuck between milk snake and corn snake kind of look at the colors and patterns and find one that you really like and that you really enjoy um that might help you because really and truly the takeaway from this video they're pretty much the same exact snake <laughs> So again, this was not meant to be a care guide by any means, just to kind of help compare and contrast milk snakes and corn snakes. If you're looking for a care guide, I do have a corn snake care guide already um, that you can find if you go to my playlists here on YouTube. I do have a care guide playlist where I put all my care guides. So I do have a corn snake care guide there. Um, now that I've had zero for way over a year, I'm actually working on a milk snake care guide. Um, this one's taking me a little longer because I'm looking at the different localities of corn snakes not corn snakes, milk snakes, and comparing their care. For example, he's a Mexican. Does his care compare, like how does it compare to like a Nelson's milk snake? So that one's taking me a little longer because I don't know if I want to just specifically say Mexican milk snake or milk snake in general. Um, so it's just taking me a little longer to do that one, but that is one that I am in the process of working on. So thank you guys for watching today's video. If you found it helpful or enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I know I rambled a lot in this video. It's just, I, it's been a while since I filmed a video, <laughs> so I'm just catching up with you guys, getting used to being in front of the camera again. Um, but yeah, so if you guys enjoyed this or you want to see more of my animals, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you for the next video. Bye!